So basically what we're doing here is we're building basic first-person controls. Really, really crappy first-person controls. Okay, now what we're going to do, we've written this code that might be magic or whatever, um, but we have certain properties that we're defining that we want to be able to control different things about our movement. For example, we want to be able to control how fast we can move forward and how fast we can turn. So I'm going to create two new variables. One's called move speed, and it's a floating point value. I'll set it at one because I don't know how fast we need it to be. I'm going to create one called turn speed. And you see what we're doing here, um, we're using the term var, which basically means um, variable, because we want to create a new variable. What's a variable? A variable is basically a value. Um, for example, the amount of money you have in your bank account it could be a variable, and we could define it as, say, money in bank, and, it's, and in your case it might be 9999, or it might be negative 9999, if you're in debt. Um, so in this case, we're creating a variable. Its name is move speed, okay? And the syntax here is to add a little colon, and that's where you can define the type of variable there is. And you don't actually need this in Unity, which is kind of cool. You can just go like that if you want. Um, so maybe we'll do that for now because that's a bit simple. And then we have an equal sign, and then this is the value that we're going to set it to, 1.0. And then semicolons have to come after all of your main statements. Kind of like a period. So, I've got that. We're just going to replace these values here. Okay. So, our script is compiled, and then we're going to. Oh, we don't need to reattach it, it's already there. So, let's see what happens when we run this. We hold. Oh, we don't have these buttons set up. Well, let's set up these buttons. So, we. This is the input manager that we get to by going to project settings input. And we've increased the size of the number of things in the input manager. Right now there's 17. We want to add four more things so we can type in 21. So I'm going to define double use forward. Forward, backward, left, right. Go. Okay, so those are all defined now. Now we can go into our script and set it up to use those buttons, uh, which are aim, set it forward. Left. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay, so you can hold left to rotate really, really, really slowly. So let's speed that up here. Turn speed. Now you can actually just drag left and right over here to increase the values. Let's change that to 45. Let's change your speed to 10. So now we can rotate and we can move forward and backwards. And we're going to lock these values in here. So how does the script actually work? Well, we set up these variables and we set up this input here. Um, and now the work that we're doing here is to actually change the position of the object based on where the object is facing. And we don't have to do any crazy math to figure that out because we have vector math that we can automatically use. And vectors basically are objects that are defined as three numbers in one thing. So x, y, z is a vector. And vectors used to store the position. So to add two vectors together is to change a position. In this case, we just want to move forward. And there's this lovely thing that we can use called transform.forward that gets us the orientation of the object. We multiply that by the speed that we want to move at, which we've defined in move speed, 
and multiply that by this. And this is time dot delta time, and what that means is the amount of time that's passed in this particular frame. And we need to multiply that to conform our game to whatever frame rate the game happens to be running at. So if the game was running on a faster computer, this value would be smaller because there'd be, say, 100 frames in a second. So each update would be a smaller piece of time. If we were running on an ancient computer that was getting 10 frames a second, each frame would be larger. So we need to multiply that. And over here, this is how we actually rotate stuff. Um, each object has axes and can be rotated on the different axes. So for example, this object could be rotated just on its Y axis. Y is the up and down axis. So that's essentially what we're doing is we're just rotating around that one axis. Um, and to get to that we type uh, Euler angles dot Y. And I think it's pronounced Euler even though it sounds retarded. Um, <laughs> so we're just basically adding degrees into it, similarly how we added movement. We just take a speed value and multiply by time. Pretty simple. And I'd like to show you just a bit more about the tools in Unity. Um, up here we have these four buttons. These are different modes for editing stuff in the scene. Um, the leftmost button is just for moving around, just moving the view. You can use that in conjunction with this widget here. It basically just lets you switch to different views. Front, right, back, top, perspective mode. Very handy. It's fun to use this. You don't need to set up multiple views because you can switch really quickly just using this. Um, movement tool we went over before a bit. You can just drag stuff around on different axes if you want. You can hit Command D to duplicate stuff which is a fun way to just start prototyping things. You can hold command to uh, walk to the grid. So if I duplicate this, hold command, I can walk to the grid. I could create, for example, like some steps. Um, you might think, well, it's just a bunch of cubes, it's a big deal. Well, actually, prototyping levels for platforming games in Unity is really fun to do with just cubes. You can build a lot out of it. Um, over here we have the rot rotate tool that we looked at. Same thing, you can lock the grid if you want by holding command. And if you're dragging on these different colored lines, that's how you select the axis that you want. If you just drag anywhere, you can do it just like a, a sphere. This is a scale tool, and we can scale on different axes, or we could scale all the axes at once. Similar things. Uh, the really cool thing is you can actually hit Q, W, E, R to switch between these really quickly. So you don't need to go up here and click this every time, you can just do that. That's how you get really fast at editing. Um, another shortcut, if you're lost in a really complicated scene, like say I zoomed way over here and I didn't know where I was and I wanted to see this cube, you just select it in the hierarchy and you click once over here so that this scene window has focus and then you hit F. And that'll just warp you right to where the object is. 